once again Christian greetings to all our valued listeners and viewers throughout the whole world even more particularly to all shepherds rod believers and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the United States of America special greetings to our brethren in Colorado to our brethren in Georgia in Kansas in Missouri in Texas to Chicago Illinois in Fiji Island Mexico Spain Africa Kenya Pakistan to the United Kingdom and also to our brethren in Australia and to the rest of the 144,000 living saints scattered abroad greetings may the good lord bless you brothers and sisters this is our episode special episode number 6 on the subject the beast and its image i would like to read uh, to us r107 it says god who is so particular for the good of his church in revealing his truth to his people has presented to us wonderful pictures of historical events which is the evidence of love everlasting for israel his chosen the first fruits of his harvest does the god of jacob thousands of years in advance had laid his plans to present to his people a work of prophetic art with divine touch to us our page 107 i would like to read this reading written by alonso jones it says here image to the beast it says therefore this is a prophecy with which god wants us to be so well acquainted beforehand that we will look at it from the right side and not be behind when it does come and in order to do that you see the lord gives us a picture that has already been wrought out in history he gives the course of events that have already been carried out fulfilled before the eyes of men in a slow process so that in studying it as it occurred slowly in that we can become thoroughly acquainted with the principles that were established and their outgrowth and the result of them and he does that in order that we may be so well acquainted with those things in all their bearings that when the first hint of those things is touched of those things is touched here we may know the outcome of it long beforehand and therefore have ample time to take warning and never get caught And then it says, so I say it over again. So I say it over again. From the nature of things and in the fast world of these last days, and these things all coming so fast, in order to be safe, we have got to be ahead of the actual occurrence of events. So in order for us to be safe, we have got to be ahead of the actual occurrence of events. And in order to prepare and in order to prepare us for that, God has drawn it slowly out before our eyes in the historical evidence of the beast. He has drawn that out so that we can study it at leisure. And in this study, as it occurred slowly, even up to the full development and ruin that was wrought by it before we can by the spirit of god enlightening us always be ahead of these things that are coming now so that when they do come however fast we are only glad because we know beforehand what it all means and i think this reading is also the same with the statement in the shepherd verse word that god gave allowance in order for us to prepare the before the actual occurrence god gave us already the picture is lowly and here in track number 15 on page 76 it says no inspiration would not thus confuse its terms and still expect us to comprehend its teachings to know how to interpret its symbols and when to expect the actual events to take place So it says, and when to expect the actual events to take place. I remember, again, the statement in Answerer. Answerer number 1, pages 60 and page 61. It says, we must stand. Stand against the most ingenious special trap ever set by the evil one. But how shall we do this if we know not what it is and or where it is? It says, but how shall we do this if we know not what it is or where it is? Answerer number one, page 60 and page 
In 2 TG number 36, I would like to read this reading saying, 2 TG 36 page 8, Soon brother, sister, we are to enter into this period of persecution. And how thankful we should be that there is no need to fear, no need to be taken off guard. For with the light now shining on our pathway, we should know what to expect and how to cope with the situation. Truly, unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. Psalms 112 verse 4. So, thank to the Lord. We have the Shepherd's Rod publications. The, through these publications, completely unmask the deception of the devil. And it is through the beast symbolization or through the book of Daniel and through the book of Revelation. I remember the statement given by the Jeffers Rod that through the symbolization of the scarlet colored beast, it says here in 2TG number 18, page 21 and page 22, we must fully realize that God through this symbolism summarizes the history of the entire world. So through the symbolization of the scarlet colored beast, God summarizes the history of the entire world. And then it says, Thus along with this symbolism, the world of sin is represented from its beginning to its very end. This beast, the scarlet colored beast, therefore is the symbolical summary of the whole world. And I would like to repeat again, the beast revelation cometh from God. And through this symbolization, God's chosen medium to uncover the traps of the devil. But the scarlet colored beast being the last clearly indicates that through the scarlet colored beast, through the revelation of the scarlet colored beast, the traps of the devil is completely unmasked, completely uncovers the traps of the devil. But the shepherd's rod declared clearly in track number 6, on page 80, it says, Here it is seen that the prophecies and the correct interpretation thereof are profitable. So the, the prophecies are profitable only if the interpretation thereof is correct. And according to 2SR, page 78, it says, Interpretation is correct only when inspired by the same spirit thus timely utterances are revealed. 2SR, page 78. So, interpretations are correct only when inspired by the same spirit. The same spirit that inspired Daniel. The same spirit that inspired John the Beloved, John the Revelator. The same spirit that inspired Sister White. The same spirit that inspired Betty Hotep. And that is the spirit of Christ. That is the spirit of Christ according to the Shepherd's Rod. Here I am the old symbolic code. Five symbolic code. One to five, page six. In the last book of the Bible, chapter 12, verse 17, we find that the devil will be especially wroth with those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which the author of the book tells us is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19, verse 10. And the apostle Peter makes it clear that the testimony of Jesus and the spirit of prophecy are the spirit of Christ in the prophets who testified beforehand. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. So the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of Christ in the prophets. I would like to read 1SR on page 200. 212. It says, The symbols given by inspiration are perfectly capable of revealing the truth beyond a shadow of a doubt. Do not forget the statement in 2SR 288. Written words can be misconstrued, but symbols cannot. Thus making the learned and unlearned to immediately distinguish the difference between truth and error. And in 2SR page 10, it says, While the enemy has succeeded in confusing the written word of God, God lightens the earth with his glory by these symbolic revelations. That through these symbolic revelations, God completely uncovers the traps of the devil. For the picture tells the story and symbols do not lie. 1SR page 124. So the picture tells the story. Symbols do not lie. So if you will study subject headquarters, the devil is expert to twist the meaning of the word of God. The same way the scribes and Pharisees, they focus to the subject concerning the temple and boasting 
that they were the chosen people of God because the temple is belong to them. But through the symbolization of the beast, brothers and sisters, the devil will have a hard time to twist the meaning of the symbolization of the beast. Now here in 1 SR page 212, the symbols given by inspiration are perfectly capable of revealing the truth beyond a shadow of a doubt. Any interpretation of the prophecy that does not come up to the exact specification by the symbols is not the kind that can be depended upon and sooner or later would be exploded. So any interpretation of the prophecy but such interpretation does not come up to the exact specification of the symbolical prophecy is not the kind that can be depended upon and sooner or later would be exploded. Let us read again the statement in 2SR page 10. I would like to begin on page 9. It says, The message in this volume, meaning 2SR, The message in this volume was prophetically timed by the parable of the householder who sent laborers into his vineyard. Matthew 20 verse 1 to 16. The word time meaning there is a divinely appointed time. Prophetically timed. And what time? Proving to be the 11th hour call. The last and at the right time. The fact that this wonderful revelation of the scriptures cannot be contradicted. So, what a nice statement. That the symbolization cannot be contradicted. Proves the message correct and its inspiration true. This prophetic call is based on the prophecies of Daniel and its explanation made clear by the book of Revelation. Thus, it is symbolically explained these prophetic symbols of beasts, wings, horns, heads, crowns, etc. prove to be most perfect symbols in revealing the truth represented by them and when correctly applied, it is certain that their meaning cannot be misconstrued. And reading again the statement in 2SR page 194, it says, Unless the meaning of every symbol is fittingly explained so that it cannot be contradicted and a present truth lesson with special significance derived the interpretation cannot be dependable and there can be no truth in it god does not make vain repetitions neither would he waste the time of his servants to write them therefore every little symbol has its meaning and reveals a great truth. Now, I would like to apply that statement in the three beasts in the book of Revelation. Leopard like the two horned beast and the scarlet colored beast. Every little symbol has its meaning and reveals a great truth according to the Jumper's Rod. Now, let us read 2SR on page 111. It is entitled, The Scarlet Colored Beast. Now, let's read the statement. It says, I would like to begin to the statement saying, The book of Daniel and the book of Revelation were written especially for the generation living at the time of the end and not so much for the Roman world. So, what is the book of Daniel? Especially addressed to the generation living at the time of the end and not so much for the Roman world. Then it says, see Daniel 12 verse 4. They had no understanding of the writings that pertain to the last days and thus could not have profited by them. So the people living in a period of time prior to the time of the end, they were not profited by the book of Daniel as well as the book of Revelation because they were living in a time by which the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation are still sealed. And the shepherd's run plainly told us and three symbolic code concerning the time of the end. Three symbolic code, number 8 to 10, page 8, it says, This time must have begun when the book began to be opened. But if we must declare the beginning of that time in more specific terms, it, in a special sense, began in the year 1844. So the time of the end commenced in the year 1844. So the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation is especially addressed to the people living from 1844 onwards. But for sure, it is even more directly addressed 
to the last generation of men. By which according to spiritual gifts, book 3, page 26, that generation designed by God to be translated to heaven without seeing death. You and I, if we will be faithful, because the promise in 2 TG number 12, page 30, saying that therefore, the revelation therefore is to be more fully understood during the judgment of the living. 2 TG 12, page 30. And I do fully believe that we are living in that period of time, brothers and sisters. The statement in 2 TG number 7, page 3, it says, Daniel was told to shut and seal the book even to the time of the end. The book, therefore, was not for the understanding of the people before the time of the end. So the understanding of the book was not given to the people living prior to the time of the end. But the absolute fact is that according to 3 symbolic code, Number 5 and 6, page 12, it says, Daniel's prophecies are to be rebuilt in the time of the end. Daniel 12 verse 4. Yet it would be unreasonable for one to conclude that these prophecies are to be rebuilt after the end of the world. What is the end of the world? Let's go back again to the reading in 3 symbolic code number 8 to 10 page 8. It says, the time of the end is the period just before the end of the world. And we know the end of the world is the harvest. And that is the judgment of the living. So brothers and sisters, in the period of the judgment of the living, the entire book of Daniel must be completely revealed according to the voice of inspiration. And we read several times according to 1SR Packet Edition, page 9, it says, Any thinker knows that to have made known the truth of it before time would have left it as vain, valueless, and ineffective as would making known the truth about the image of the beast years before or a minute after it does its deceptive work. But at the striking of the foreordained hour, the time inspiration unlocks the mystery. All can behold the truth and profit by it. Happily, we can then intelligently strive to be among this guileless company and can be sealed with them if we sincerely and steadfastly follow on to know the truth on time. One is our packet edition, page 9 and page 10. And here the statement also given by... Alonzo Jones, let me read to you. It says here, brothers and sisters, that what danger will there be that men will worship the beast at a time when there will be none for them to worship? God will never send an angel to warn men against the worship of the beast when he does not exist. So the statement is very plain. Remember, brothers and sisters, that warning is found in the third angel's message, Revelation 14, verse 9. And we studied several times that the seventh angel in Revelation 10, verse 5 to 7, is the sum total of the message of the third angel. Or in other words, the seventh angel in Revelation 10, verse 5 to 7, is the complete unfoldment concerning the message of the third angel. And I would like to read the statement. It says, The angel of chapter 10 is the seventh angel. The angel of chapter 10 is the seventh angel. His message is the sum total of the three messages. And the last message of the seventh angel is the third angel's message. The last part of this last message is the promulgation of the doctrine of life. And death. It is a life and death matter. And I remember the statement and um, in 10 symbolic code. Since this message is dealing with life and death matter, brothers and sisters. So I need to be very careful in studying this prophecy. It says here, I would like to read this statement in 10 symbolic code number 7, page 3 and 4. I hardly know how to explain this most vital subject by which the Spirit of God through His Holy Word has opened the avenue of correspondence. It is not difficult to express the idea I wish to convey to you. But how to say it? Fearing a chance of misunderstanding or diminishing the truth God has so graciously revealed to His people. Realizing that this is dealing with a matter of life 
and death. It is dealing with a matter which concerns life and death. Now here's another statement that I would like to read. It says, The third angel gives us warning of the danger. The third angel gives us warning of the danger which is now before us. In reality, this statement cannot be applied in the days of Sister White, the days of Alonso Jones and B.D. Hodder. And that is why in manuscript release, volume 7, 417, it says that the prophets spoke less in their time. That their prophesying is enforced with us. Volume 7, manuscript release, 417. So it says here, brothers and sisters, the third angel gave us warning of the danger which is now before us. Then it says, the warning precedes the danger that we by seasonable admonition may make our escape. That is very logical. The same with the statement in 1SR Packet Edition, page 9 and 10. That the warning precedes the danger. So the warning message, brothers and sisters, is given at the time when there is still opportunity to escape such deception. And it is the warning message of the third angel, by which according to the shepherd's rod on the general conference special, page 39, and page 40, it says, So we see that the more we consider the subject, the more obvious becomes the truth that the third angel's message in its final phase is the judgment for the living, the harvest. Plainly, then the work of Elijah is to give light on the judgment for the living. The General Conference Special, pages 39 and page 40. Now, since there is no other publication, which is called the Elijah Message, except the Shepherd's Rod publications, so we will dwell largely on the Shepherd's Rod publications concerning, brothers and sisters, this wonderful subject. Although the statement given in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, is says here, let's read, Volume 8, page 298. I would like to read this reading. We must follow the direction given through the spirit of prophecy. We must love and obey the truth for this time. This will save us from accepting strong delusions. God has spoken to us through His Word. He has spoken to us through the testimonies to the church and through the books that have helped to make plain our present duty and the position that we should now occupy. And what books is that? That is the entire constituent of the Golden Bowl. All the inspired writings. But we stand in the position teach only in the light of the rod. Answerer number 5, page 56. Now, let's go back again, brothers and sisters, and focus our attention to the scarlet colored beast and leopard-like beast, as well as the tohun beast. Now, let's go back to 2SR, page 111. It says, We believe that there must be more complete symbolical information for this present generation than for any previous one. But it is concerning the generation from 1844 onwards, according to this reading, that the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation is especially addressed to the people living in the time of the end. It says here, we believe that there must be more complete symbolical information for this present generation than for any previous one. So comparing, I remember the statement in, 4 Symbolical 10 to 12, page 3, it says, Now our attention is called to the most important question. Could it be possible that the scriptures should contain such a complete prophecy of the church to 1844 and contain none at all for her since then? All must honestly agree that to leave the church out of prophecy at any time is illogical and also impossible for god has never left his people in darkness and he surely would not do so now at the most important time in the world's history what is the most important time in the world history that is the time of the end by which god gave unto them a complete information through symbolical prophecy now let us read again the statement here in 2SR page 111. It says, We believe that there must be more complete symbolical information for this present generation than for any previous one. 
If there is any information from 1844 backwards, it is even more complete information that God had bestowed unto His people to those who are living in the time of the end. But even more particularly to the last generation of men. Because the time of the end is divided into two divisions. The time of the end in the period of the judgment that pertains to the dead. Time of the end in the period of the judgment that pertains to the living. It says here in 2SR page 111, We believe that there must be more complete symbolical information for this present generation than for any previous one. Then it says, Thus, it is very inconsistent and unreasonable of those who have applied the leopard like this of Revelation 13 and the scarlet colored of Revelation 17 in addition to the nondescript beast of Daniel 7 as symbols of Rome. So here the shepherd's rod is emphasizing that it is inconsistent, and not only inconsistent, but unreasonable that the symbolization of the leopard-like beast and the symbolization of the scarlet-colored beast is an addition to the symbolization of the Roman world. This divine principle that we need to understand, there is a portion in the leopard-like beast and in the scarlet-colored beast that explains the beast in Daniel 7 more particularly to the nondescript beast. But the thing that we should not ever forget that the leopard-like beast and the scarlet-colored beast, there must be a particular object in view by which that lesson, that symbolization, brothers and sisters, must be applied from 1844 onwards. I would like to read to you the statement here in 2SR page 118. And it's concerning Revelation 17, verse 10. Let's read this statement. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. We know that there are thousands of kings that arise in this earth. But the seven kings mentioned here are the seven kings whose power is worldwide or universal. There are only seven kings by which their powers are worldwide and universal. Then it says, the king that is, must be the one in existence at this present time. So that is the sixth universal king. What is the sixth universal king? Now let's read again. The king that is, must be the one in existence at this present time. And the one that is not yet come, must be in the future. Consequently, the five that are fallen must be in the past. This would be the only fair position for one to take without doing injury to the holy word of God. As it has reference to the entire world's history under sin, we must consider the number of universal empires or periods since the world began. There is one before the flood, as previously explained. The second is Babylon. That is represented by lion. And this is the reason the lion has two wings to indicate that this is the second universal empire. And the third is Middle Persia, represented by the, by the beer. And that is why there are three ribs in the mouth of the beer to indicate that that is the third universal empire. The fourth is Grisha. And that is the reason that Grisha represented by the leopard, the four-headed leopard. And that is the reason that the leopard has four wings to indicate that Grisha is the fourth universal empire. And the fifth is the Roman monarchy. These five are fallen. These five are fallen. The one that is, is the present civilization since the fall of Rome under the symbol of the leopard light and the scarlet colored beast. So the sixth universal king was illustrated by two symbolizations Leopard-like and scarlet-colored beast. So, brothers and sisters, that is from 1798 onwards, the commencement of the sixth universal king, represented by the leopard-like beast and the scarlet-colored beast, it says, to the commencement of the millennium, which period is termed Rome in her broken state. 
Rome, do not forget that. Rome in her broken state. It says, represented by the feet and tooth of the great image of Daniel 2. What is Rome in her broken state in the great image? Represented by the feet and tooth, not legs. Because the legs of iron, the two legs of iron represented Rome in its two stages, pagan and papal Rome. But the ten tooths in the two feet, brothers and sisters, represent Rome in her broken state. But in the book of Revelation, Rome in her broken state is represented by the leopard-like and the scarlet colored beast. So we need to study closely now to connect the great image in Daniel chapter 2. To repeat again, in 2SR page 10, there are two prophecies mentioned there, symbolical and typological. In the book of Daniel, the symbolical prophecy is Daniel 2, the great image. But the typological prophecy is Daniel 3, the golden image. And I've stated several times, which will come first? The great image, the golden image. Now let us focus first to the great image. Represented by Rome in her broken state. But in the beast revelation, Rome in her broken state is not found in the book of Daniel. It is found in the book of Revelation. Represented by the leopard like and the scarlet colored beast. So we need to connect the symbolization of the leopard like and the scarlet colored together with the great image in Daniel chapter 2. Now let us focus first, brothers and sisters, to the leopard like beast. Because as far as the shepherd's rod is thus concerned, the tentus and the great image is more directly connected to the leopard like beast rather than to the scarlet colored beast. Now let us read 1SR page 211. Now let me read to you. For the first time, these ten kings' horns are brought to our attention by the scriptures found in Daniel 2, verse 41 and 42, represented by the ten tooths on the great image in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. So that is pointing to the ten crown horns of Revelation 13, verse 1. So that is pointing to the leopard-like beast, brothers and sisters. Now let us read again the statement given by the voice of inspiration. 1SR on page 200. 11. And you can read the upper sentence pointing to Revelation 13 verse 1. And it says, For the first time, these ten kings' horns, pointing to the crown horns, are brought to our attention by the scriptures found in Daniel 2 verse 41 and 42. So the ten tooths on the great image on verse 41 and 42 represent the ten horns the ten crown horns of the leopard-like beast. And then it says, After revealing to the king the end of his golden empire, because in the great image, Babylon represents the head of gold. After revealing to the king the end of his golden empire, represented by the head of gold, and down through the stream of time to the second coming of Christ, Daniel says, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Daniel 2 verse 44. What kings in the period of the ten crown horns in the days of these kings the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Now let us go to the next paragraph. It says, If the ten horns of this beast if the ten horns of this beast represent the kings now in existence, at which time shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, quoting the words of Daniel. Then the beast himself represents the period following Rome as the breaking down of the Roman Empire brought about the existence of these kings. It is also being termed Rome in her broken state, symbolized by the great image of Daniel 2 verse 42, the feet and thoughts of which are composed of iron and clay. Iron is the metal which represents Rome, the clay, the broken part. Now, I would like to read first, brothers and sisters, answerer number one. Answerer number one. 
on page 24. It says, We hold it to be a simple, self-evident truth that as the stone, Daniel 2 verse 34, is symbolical of the kingdom, and that as it smite the tooth of the image, it necessarily must be set up before it smites them. Do not forget that this kingdom, Daniel 2 verse 44, it is the God of heaven who will set up this kingdom. And of course, directly pointing to Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who will set up this kingdom, the stone kingdom. Now let us read again. It says, it necessarily must be set up before it smites them. Just as Daniel said, in the days of these kings, the two kings, the kings of today, what is the kings of today? The crown horns. In the days of these kings cannot mean after their days. Cannot mean after their days. And unless the kingdom is set up, brought into being, it cannot smite the nations. But the most important part is that, no, it is not after their days, neither before their days, but in the days of these kings, brothers and sisters, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom. In the days of these kings, not before and not after, but in the days of these kings. What kings? The ten crowned horns. Now, I would like to read to you track number 12. Here in track number 12, on page, I think page 33, page 32, it says, Now from the manifest similarity between the leopard-like beast and the scarlet-colored beast, one should recognize that the latter is the image of the former. His deadly wound having been healed, and his horns and crowned. The crownless horns of the latter show that he represents the world in a time when there are no crown kings, but that instead the world is ruled by an ecclesiastical head, the woman that drives the beast. Track number 12, page 32. What is the difference between the woman is sitting on the beast and the woman rides the beast. Would you think it is the same? As far as the shepherd's eyes does concern, I would like to read again the statement so that you could still remember. In track number 15 and page 76, No, inspiration would not thus confuse its terms. So inspiration would not confuse us every term and still expects us to comprehend its teachings to know how to interpret its symbols and when to expect the actual events to take place. Or in other words, let us distinctly separate the term used by inspiration, uncrowned, and the term crownless. The term uncrowned indicates that they had been crowned and later on uncrowned. But the term crownless never been crowned. And this term crownless, the term crownless horns is applied to communism. But the term uncrowned, brothers and sisters, cannot be applied to communism. Now, I would like to emphasize, brothers and sisters, because the term uncrowned, also the term used by inspiration is, the woman is sitting on the beast. But on the term crownless, the term used by inspiration, the woman drives the beast. Of course, if you will say drives, the beast is moving. But sitting on the beast, brothers and sisters, is pointing to the beast by which the ten horns had been uncrowned. Now, both this one and this one, God's kingdom must be established before the period of the uncrowned ten horns. God's kingdom must be established in the days of the crown kings, not in the days when the ten crown kings will be uncrowned. How much more to the time when the ten horns represent the crownless horns? Or in other words, the statement given by the inspiration it says that at the time the woman drives the beast, there will be no more crown kings. Track number 12, page 32. Now, I would like to read to you this reading. And um, track number 12, I think page 46. Track number 12, page 46 and page 47. So let us read. God's people at that time can no more serve the Lord in Babylon and in Egypt. So there are two words mentioned here. Babylon, Egypt. It says God's people at that time. What time? Brothers and sisters, at the time when the woman is sitting on the beast. If you will say the woman is sitting on the beast, that is the predicted time that God's people must go out of Egypt. 
But if the woman is riding on the beast, riding on the scarlet colored beast, that is the time that God's people must come out of Babylon. I would like to read to you this reading and let us analyze closely. Track number 12, page 36. So let us read the statement. Page 36 and page 37. Then the warning against receiving the mark, Revelation 14, verse 9 to 11. Along with the call to come out, will be repeated with an exceeding loud cry throughout Babylon's dominion. What does it mean by the word "repeated"? Meaning second time. Therefore, the warning of Revelation 14, verse 9 to 11, must be a warning to get out of Egypt. And then that warning of the third angel will be repeated again to come out of Babylon. And that is why the shepherd's son says that at the time, brothers and sisters, when the woman is sitting on the beast, God's people could no longer serve the Lord in Egypt. God's people at that time could no more serve the Lord in Babylon and in Egypt. So one truth dovetailing another. Track number 5, page 36. One thing proves another or explain another. 2SR 255. The statement, brothers and sisters, I would like to read again. And 1SR page 64. This experience of the Israelites in departing from Egypt was written for the instruction of those who should live in the last days. Before the overflowing scourge shall come upon the dwellers of the earth, the Lord calls upon all who are Israelites indeed to prepare for that event. And in this study, it was revealed through the symbolization of the scarlet colored beast. Now, I would like to um, go back again to the statement in track number 12. Let's read the statement, brethren. Track number 12, I think this is page 41. It says, The certainty that both the vineyard and the wilderness are in existence at the same time shows first that Babylon, riding, ruling the beast, reigns only over the wilderness, Gentile world. And second, that from, from it, God's people are called to go into the vineyard, the kingdom restored. Where there are no sins and where there is no fear of their receiving the plagues. Of this kingdom of safety, the prophet Daniel wrote, We have Daniel 2 verse 44. Now, let us read 2SR. What is the explanation given by 2SR? 2SR page 119. It is concerning Revelation 17 verse 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The kings that descended from the Roman monarchy had been in continual strife and will be to the end. What is the ten horns in The leopard-like beast. It is a descendant from the Roman monarchy. And the voice of inspiration says, let's read again the statement. The kings that descended from the Roman monarchy had been in continual strife and will be to the end, said the prophet. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Daniel 2 verse 43. So the shepherd's rod is teaching my dear brothers and sisters that this kingdom must be established in the period by which represented by iron and clay. What is iron and clay? Disunited, it says They were in continual strife. Whereas Revelation 17 verse 13, it says, This have one mind. There are two applications of Revelation 17 13. First, it is applied to all the legislative powers in the United States of America. Why is it that they arrived to the point, This have one mind. Let us read the Bible. Revelation 17 verse 13. It says, This have one mind. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The answer is found in verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. And to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Why is it that they arrived to one mind? In reality is God. In order to fulfill the prophecy. God put it into their hearts. 
into their minds. The iron and the clay will be united as one to agree and to give their power and their strength unto the beast. But the Bible is very plain as stated by the Shambers Rod in 2SR page 119. Prior to Revelation 17 verse 13 and verse 17, at the time when God put into their hearts that all of them will have one mind to agree and give their power, strength, and authority to the beast in the period of time by which they were fighting against each other. They were disunited, brothers and sisters. That is the time that the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom. So the term uncrowned, brothers and sisters, is pointing to Revelation 17, verse 13 and 14. What is represented by the crown? Let us read the shepherd's rod. 2SR, page 88. The crowns represent civil authority. What is represented by the crown? Civil authority. Now, I would like to read 3SM, 392 and 393. It says, one universal confederacy. So it says, one universal confederacy. We know there are two confederacy mentioned in the Bible, as explained by the shepherds of Assyrian and Babylonian confederacy. So we need to link that um, subject. Now I would like to read the reading. 3SM 392 and 393. Before reading this statement, I would like to read the upper portion. It says, there will be laws controlling conscience. The same with the statement, brethren, and this is for the church, volume 5, 236. The world is against us. The popular churches are against us. The laws of the land will soon be against us. But it is even more particularly pointing to the United States of America. And I would like to emphasize that statement. Revelation 13 verse 12. And he spake like a dragon. Revelation 13 verse 12. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamp. And he spake as a dragon. I remember the statement given in 1888 message. It says the image to the beast. I would like to read this reading. It says it is important. It is important, therefore, for us to study the prophecy written by Alonso Jones entitled Image to the Beast. It is important, therefore, for us to study the prophecy and see what it says. So we need to study closely. What does the prophecy say? And as much as possible, what it does not say. Now going to Revelation 13, page 12. What does the Bible say? What is the description? Brothers and sisters, the description given in the Bible, Revelation 13 verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. What is his two horns? Like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. What do you think? Brothers and sisters, are you waiting the implementation of the mark of the beast system? Is that the time that he spake as a dragon? No, that is not. That is the time that the dragon roar. I think uh, there's a state in the great controversy. It is the roar of the dragon. So to understand how the dragon speak, the description in the great controversy, it says, I would like to read that statement in the great controversy 624. It says, his voice is so unsubdued yet full of melody. You see, that is how the dragon speak. His voice is so Subdued yet full of melody. How did the dragon speak in the Garden of Eden? According to the Bible, he speak as an angel of light. According to Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 to verse, verse 18. Now I would like to read again the statement here in 3SM 392. There will be laws controlling conscience. And I would like to say, brothers and sisters, that these laws to be established in the United States of America which is undermining the First Amendment, I would like to define as far as the sport prophecy is thus concerned. They will call it love and respect, by which on the surface, it sounds good. That you need to love and you need to respect. And of course, it will be supported by the Bible. But it is undermining the First Amendment as well as the bottom line is to prohibit anyone that you could sigh and cry. Because it is, according to 2TG, I would like to use that term. 2TG number uh, 17, it says, page 11, from this you see that the whole plan, the whole plan 
is directed by a supernatural power. Of course, that is coming from the devil. According to Revelation 13, the dragon give her power and authority. Revelation 13 verse 4. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Who give power unto the beast? The dragon. But we are talking about the beast like a lamb. So it says here, brothers and sisters, 2 TG 17, 11, From this you see that the whole plan is directed by a supernatural power whose aim is to boycott the people of God. The aim is to boycott the people of God. And I do fully believe, pointing to the 144,000, living saints because God commanded you to sigh and cry for all the abominations now since there is a law by which they will say that you cannot speak anything that will incite rebellion and of course they will categorize your sighing and crying you are inciting rebellion against the seventh day Adventist church so you will be held responsible to the law brothers and sisters remember according to, to SR page 105 it says, Satan knows how to deceive so that it cannot be easily detected. He studies the inclination of the people and the thing which appeals most, he sets us a trap. And brothers and sisters, of course, to the finite understanding, that law is very good to give absolute respect to the civil authorities, love and respect as well as to the ecclesiastical authorities. But the bottom line is that is to boycott. The whole plan is directed by supernatural power, the devil. Because the devil knoweth that the 144,000 living saints, that is his Waterloo, according to White House Recruiter, page 25. Now, at this time, 100% this is the fulfillment of the prophecy by which Democrats and Republicans are at variance. The statement, the iron and the clay, the time that they could not cleave one to another, I think this is the fulfillment of the prophecy. Why? We will uh, read this uh, 3SM 392, but I would like to explain first. The prophecy corroborates history. Remember the statement in the Old Symbolic Code, I would like to read. For Symbolic Code 10 to 12, page 2. All of which shows that there has occurred nothing in church history of which the voice of prophecy has failed to speak. Do not forget this statement. For Symbolic Code 10 to 12, page 2. All of which shows that there has occurred nothing in church history of which the voice of prophecy has failed to speak. And let us read again the statement given by um, Alonso Jones that history and prophecy must be perfectly corroborates. History is the fulfilled prophecy and prophecy is the advanced history. I would like to read this reading. History is the only true commentary on the prophecies. History is the only true commentary on the prophecies and the only true exposition of the prophecies as to set down together the history and the prophecy because history as it really is is but the complement of prophecy as it is written. And how about another statement? It says, I would like to read, to know whether we have the true historical event for the fulfillment of a prophecy, to know whether we have the true historical event for the fulfillment of a prophecy, if you find every word of the prophecy after the figures are understood is literally fulfilled, then you may know that your history is the true event. But if one, would, if one word lacks a fulfillment, then you must look for another event or wait its future development. For God takes care that history and prophecy that agree so that the true believing children of God may never be ashamed. So that is the divine principle. In 1 SR, 100, 128 in 1 SR, it says, If it is engraved on a tile, it cannot be erased. If it is engraved on a tile, it cannot be erased. The thought is that the prophecy will surely come to pass, and after it once becomes history, one cannot erase the things portrayed. It is there to stay through all ages. And what is the statement given by the voice of inspiration? The beast revelation is the revelation of God. The entire history from the beginning of sin to the end of time. I would like to read 1SR. 1SR one page 200, 213. Let's read the statement. 
the little horn on the base of Daniel 7 verse 8, which came afterwards among the ten, and in place of which three fell, has been interpreted to be the papal head. From 538 AD to 1798 AD, and which was wounded in the 15th century. The deadly wound brought about the division and multiplied the head as pictured in Revelation 13 verse 1. But the absolute fact is that not only the head that had been multiplied, but as well as the horns. Because Revelation 13 verse 1, brothers and sisters, reveals the horns and the heads. So, in that statement in 1 SR 213, it was predicted beforehand, brothers and sisters, that Revelation 13 verse 1 is the multiplier of the vision of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 2. That there are two worlds according to the voice of inspiration. There are two worlds, the old world and the new world. How many heads? There, there is only one head. In the leopard like this, how many heads? Seven. Therefore, the, the one head was multiplied by seven. One times seven equals seven. But we already read in 1SR that the ten twos of the great image, brothers and sisters, represents the two worlds divided into iron and clay. But would you think it is just a mere happenstance? Brothers and sisters, I would like to read to you Revelation chapter 10. But reading 2TG, number 15, on page 4. You know that man naturally starts out with his right foot. Now since the angel's right foot was upon the sea, remember this angel represents the messenger when the book of Daniel is opened. You know that man naturally starts out with his right foot. Now since the angel's right foot was upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth, upon the land, but in we know in Revelation 10 verse uh, 2, that is earth, the the, the Statement used by the shepherd's rod, earth, uh, the, the Bible. And he had in his hand a little book opened, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Now since the angel's right foot was upon the sea and his left foot upon the land or earth, the symbolism shows that he starts out on the sea, the province of Daniel's beast, Daniel chapter 7. So the right foot is on the sea. How many twos? Only five twos. The left foot is on the earth. How many twos? Only five twos. But we have the multiplier in Revelation 13 verse 1. That according to the shepherd's rod, the ten twos of the great image is also representing the ten horns of the leopard like beast. But it was multiplied. Five, five twos times ten equals fifty. Since there are only five twos on the right foot, and five toes on the left foot, we can easily discern that the sea and the earth, both of them, must have 50 nations, brothers and sisters, 50 nations in Europe, 50 states in the United States of America. Would you think that is just a mere happenstance? No, it is purposive design. The Bible is very plain. The right foot is on the sea. What is the sea? Old world. The continent of Europe. The left foot is on the earth. What is the earth? New world. United States of America. And it is linked to Revelation 13.1 as the multiplier. In Daniel 7, only one head. Multiply by seven. Seven heads. The multiplier is ten horns. In the left foot, five twos multiplied by ten, fifty states in the United States of America. Therefore, the fulfillment of the prophecy that the great image stand must be after the fifty nations in Europe and the fifty states in the United States of America was completely in existence. Now, I would like to, and we know as far as the history is thus concerned, it was in 2012 that the 50 nations in Europe had been completed. Although I could no longer remember, uh, brothers and sisters, what is uh, that last nation that had been given the independence. Because the statement crown, the ten horns crown, meaning they have been given the independence. That is the significance. It is not literal ten. It is symbolical. But the shepherds had made it so plain. Multiplied. Multiplied by ten. The five twos on the right foot. What is the right foot? C. Euro. The left foot, five twos, multiplied by ten. 
the earth, United States of America, 50 states in the United States of America, 50 nations in Europe. The word of God is perfect. So the fulfillment of the vision must be from 2012 onwards. Because not until 2012, the nations of Europe become 50. And you can see that in Google or in Wikipedia. Now, I would like to uh, read to you, brothers and sisters, 2SR. So here in 2SR page 141, it says, The horn extends beyond 1798 unto the second coming of Christ. To repeat again, the second coming of Christ here could not be the second visible coming of Jesus Christ because that is represented by the stone. When does the stone will smite the image? When the symbolization of the tentus are already in existence. What is the symbolization of the tentus? 50 nations in Europe, 50 states in the United States of America. Both of them, there is iron, there is clay. What is the iron, brothers and sisters? That is called broken state. And it is answered in 2SR 118. In the beast, in the book of Revelation, that is leopard like and scarlet colored. So, what is the iron? The iron must be, for example, in the United States of America, must be the, the parties which is in majority. For example, in uh, lower house, if the majority is Democrats, then they are represented by iron. And the Republicans represent the clay. In Senate, if the majority is the Republican, then it must be the iron. But it is even more pertaining to the party by which the President of the United States of America, for example, this year, the president is Joe Biden. So it is even more pointing directly to the Democrats. The Democrats represents the iron. I'm trying to emphasize this prophecy because the Jefferson says that the iron and the clay, they were disunited. They were fighting against each other. And it is even more directly applied to this year 2021. There is no other history of the United States of America that the, the two parties are in disagreement. Never happened in the United States of America that when the presidential election will be finished, that the loser cannot accept that he had been lost. Still fighting. And that is the description given in the Bible that in that period of time, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed because after that time, God put into their hearts, God put into their minds that they will be united as one and that is called universal confederacy. According to 3SM page 393, by which, what is the statement in 2T17-6? Directed by supernatural power. And the whole plan is to boycott the people of God. Now, I would like to read 2SR page 141. It says, The horn extends beyond 1798 and to the second coming of Christ, represented by the stone, right? The second invisible coming of Jesus Christ, corresponding with eyes, legs, feet, and toes of the great image in Daniel chapter 2. For example, in uh, the days of King Nebuchadnezzar, only the head is in existence. And scientifically or biologically, when the woman is conceiving a child, the very first one to develop is the head. So Christ's illustrations are perfect. In the womb, no, it is not the, the hands, it is not the feet, but the very first one to develop, it is the head. And that is the illustration in the great image. But it cannot stand, not until the feet and the toes are already in existence. So th that statement in the Bible, in Daniel chapter 2, let's read. Daniel chapter 2 on verse 31. It says, Thou, O king, Daniel 2 verse 31, Thou, O king, sowest, and behold a great image, this great image, whose brightness was ex excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. In reality, that verse, that prophetic verse, must be fulfilled until after the entire description of the great image were already in existence that the great image is standing. Not until the completion of the 50 nations in Europe and the 50 states in the United States of America. United States of America began with only 13 colonies. Everybody knows that. Europe began only with 10 nations. What happened to the 10 nations? The three had been plucked up. 
by the roots. Therefore, it cannot be found in, in Europe because the tree had been plucked up by the roots. Why is it that the colonies in United States of America, instead of 10, it is 13? Ponder deeply, brothers and sisters. Would you think there is no connection with the three holes that had been plucked up by the roots? That it will never be reinstated in the old world because it was plucked up by the roots. Now, I would like to read this reading to SR 141. It says, The horn extends beyond 1798 until the second coming of Christ corresponding with the iron legs feet and tooth of the great image in Daniel chapter 2. Of the horn we read, it shall be broken without hand. Daniel 8 verse 25. The same are used of the feet and tooth of the great image in Daniel 2 verse 45. Therefore, the feet and tooth of the great image in Daniel 2 verse 45 is the fulfillment of the exceeding great horn. It says, in the days of these kings, Daniel says, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And you know what? It is very remarkable in historical event that on the first time, the Pope that was chosen in Vatican is originated in the Western continent, in Argentina. That is the first time. Why? Because that is the fulfillment of the prophecy. I would like to read Daniel 8 verse 5 in 2SR 140. The Bible is correct in making the statement concerning the kingdom of brass. What is the kingdom of brass? Shall bear rule over all the earth. Daniel 2 verse 39. I would like to read again. It says, this 2SR 139. I'm taken from Daniel 2 verse 39. These are facts which cannot be denied. However, there is another proof that bears evidence of the same. Say the prophet, and after thee, king of Babylon, shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall be rule over all the earth. Daniel 2 verse 39. The brass kingdom is accepted to represent Grecia, but the fact is that Grecia never did be rule over all the earth. I will no longer read the entire paragraph because the time is no longer to permit. You can read at your own leisure. We will project the entire paragraph. But what the Bible is saying, since according to track number 3, page 39, that the horn represents in three divisions, pagan Rome, papal Rome, and the Protestant period. And we know the Protestant period, brothers and sisters, according to 2TG, I think 2TG 22 page 21 and 22, found after the Dark Ages in the religious freedom. It is called the Protestant period, represented by the leopard-like beast. So it must be in the third period because brass has a numerical value of number 3, track number 2, page 13. But here is another signs that given by God concerning the brass to SR 140. The Bible is correct in making the statement concerning the kingdom of brass that it shall be ruled over all the earth for the brass represents the goat that the prophet stated and he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth. And we know that that is pointing to the western continent. The first time that the Pope that had been, been selected originated from the western continent, brothers and sisters, from Argentina. Because everything is fulfilling the prophecy. Now let us read again the statement here in 2SR 141. It says, the same terms of his speech are used of the feet and tooth of the great image in Daniel 2.45. You see, brothers and sisters, when does the ten tooth after it was multiplied had been completed? 2012. Although I could no longer remember what year that Pope Francis had been chosen. I think that is after um, Pope Benedict made his resignation. Uh, can you see in Google? Uh, Pope Francis, when, when does the year that Pope Francis began to reign? 2013. You see, brothers and sisters, March 13, 2013, immediately after the 50 nations had been completed. So God gave the complete information of the history from 1844 up to this present time, according to 2SR, page 111. And the remarkable one is that it was predicted beforehand that the time, brothers and sisters, of that predicted president of the United States of America, when the woman rides the beast, it is not the scarlet colored beast because the statement, when the woman rides the beast, that is the time that they 
will make an image of the beast, which is the scarlet colored beast. The word rights is applied to the political or politics in the United States of America that they will never elect vice president because the vice president is riding the president automatically. When the president wins, the vice president rides the victory of the president. But also first time in the history of the United States of America that the vice president is a woman because it is found in prophecy. Now, brothers and sisters, I would like to read to you again. And you yourself ponder deeply this statement in 2SR 155. It says, Furthermore, it is the period under the symbol of the woman riding on the beast that makes an image of the leopard like. What is the image of the leopard like? It's scarlet colored. Let us read um, 2SR 113. The scarlet colored beast is also controlled by the woman riding on his back, church and state. Thus it denotes that she is the authority or the crown for she rules the beast. This is one of the reasons why the crowns are absent on this beast. The last is an image of the first verifying the fact that the scarlet colored beast represents the image of the beast. So the image of the leopard like this is the scarlet colored beast. Who will make the image? The two horned beast. Brothers and sisters, there are many significance of two horns. The two horns, brothers and sisters, Republican and Democrats, that is applied brothers and sisters in the time of during election. But at the time when the election is over, it must be pointing brothers and sisters to the president and the vice president, the civil authority of the United States of America. But to repeat again, this statement in 2SR 155 that when does United States of America will make an image of the beast? So the image of the beast did not as yet in existence because they will make an image of the leopard like beast. When? The answer is found in this reading in 2SR 155. It is the period under the symbol of the woman riding on the beast. So that is the hint. That is not the particular object in view. That is why Alonso Jones says that God give us the hint and of course, the hint that was given by God never been happened ever since because if it was usually happened, then you will be confused. Never been happened that Vatican selected a Pope that originate in the Western continent. Never been happened ever since. The first time Pope Francis came from the Western continent, Argentina. Why? Because it represented that the brass kingdom will be ruled over all the earth. When? When the horn, brothers and sisters, come from the West, Daniel 8, verse 5. It is not pointing, brothers and sisters, to uh, the, the four divisions of the empire of Alexander the Great because they, they did not be ruled over all the earth. Is it the Lysimachians or the Seleucid dynasty or the Ptolemy? They never be ruled over all the earth according to the shepherd's rod, according to the history, according to the Bible. Brethren, it is high time now to study closely the Bible as explained by the shepherd's rod because every hint almost being touched. What is the statement in the 1888 message that if the hint that had been given is touched, we may know, brothers and sisters, that the thing will follow will be rapid ones. The final movements will be rapid ones. And we will show to you on our next episode, brothers and sisters, what will really happen this year, 2021. And hoping that God would help us and would bless us as we continue to study His Holy Word with sincerity and honesty. Because that is our only goal. No, it is not a robbery for us. If you will say that you are the true movement, it is not a robbery. The only obligation and responsibility that God has given unto us is to proclaim the message. And we fully believe that only Jesus Christ can proclaim, can claim, watchers he recognized as his. According to Alonso Jones, let us wait the fulfillment of the prophecy in Revelation 14, 12, when angel Gabriel will introduce throughout the whole world saying, here is the patience of the saints that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. And it is very embarrassing and very disappointing that at this time we are shouting that we are God's movement, but when Jesus Christ will finally come and visit the earth, 
Jesus Christ will say, I never know you. So the most important thing, according to the shepherd's rod, we need to patiently wait when God himself will claim us as his own, when Jesus Christ will recognize us as his own. Thank you very much for listening and viewing this program. May the good Lord bless you and have a beautiful, wonderful evening.